it's not enough that we bleed every month for a few days. And then we also have to deal with like breast pain, mood swings, cravings. But we also actually have to deal with a few more weird, well, I prefer to call them fascinating, things that happen when we're on our period, including period poops and butt cramps, period clots, pains in unexpected places, vaginal infections, and increased sex drive. Hi ladies, I'm Dr. Simi. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about five weird, or fascinating, things that happen when we're on our periods. Let's start with the first one, period poop. I hope it's not too much information. It shouldn't be because we all do it. Period poop is when there's a change in the consistency of your poo, so that's how runny it is, and also the frequency, so that's how often you're going. So during your period, you might notice that your poo is softer and you're going more often. Actually, let me show you. This is the Bristol stool chart, and it's like a visual aid to describe what the different poos look like. When you're not on your period, you might find that you have the perfect poo, so like a type four, and then when you're on your period, you are making porridge. The reason for this is prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are chemicals that are made by the uterus and during your period they help your uterus to contract so that it's expelling like the contents of your period, you know, the blood and the endometrial lining. But prostaglandin can also travel to and work on the muscle in your bowel. And when that happens, your bowels move more quickly. Your food passes through your bowels more quickly, which means it doesn't have as much time to absorb the water and you end up with period poo. It's actually quite temporary and after your period is finished then usually your poos will go back to normal. These prostaglandins can also cause trouble with your anal sphincters which are your anal muscles because they cause it to contract and tighten and you literally do feel that as an anal cramp which can be quite uncomfortable and painful. If you're getting this frequently then do speak to your doctor because there can be other causes of anal cramping such as endometriosis. The next one is period clots. So period clots are clumps of blood which look like a jelly-like substance that sometimes deposit themselves on your pad or tampon when you're having a period and you're more likely to get them if you suffer from heavy periods. They're basically just the lining of your uterus which is the endometrium breaking away during your period or sometimes it's because you've got a pool of clotted blood. They can look a little bit alarming because they can be sort of dark brown, dark red or even black. Usually they're nothing to worry about but if you notice that your period clots are around two and a half centimeters then speak to your doctor for further investigations. Next one is vaginal infections. Being on your period is not going to give you a vaginal infection but it can trigger vaginal infections such as BV or thrush. Vaginal pH is acidic, it's about 3.5 to 4.5, but period blood is actually pretty neutral, so the pH is about 7.5. So when you're on your period, the blood is gonna change the environment of your vagina by making it less acidic. So now that it's less acidic, this is a perfect opportunity for candida or anaerobic bacteria, which might be living there normally, but in small numbers, to overgrow and basically take advantage of the fact that the vagina is less acidic. And if it's the bacteria that overgrows, then you can get BV. And if it's the candida that overgrows, then you can get thrush. I just now know what happened. What? So basically, the lactobacilli died because the BV killed them off. No, it's more like vagina's there just getting on with its life, enjoying itself, all acidic. The acid is like <laughs> killing off all the bacteria. Then the period comes along and makes everything neutral. And now, the vagina's not acidic anymore, and the thrush is like, party. They've got their bikini on, they're spreading everywhere. <laughs> and they're making white cottage cheese vaginal discharge. And then after the period, the, the environment is acidic again, and the lactobacilli are like, this is my party. And then the thrush disappears, or it's just there in low numbers, and then you don't have problem. Then you repeat yourself again the next month. Get it? it makes so much sense. Very colourful. <laughs> it was colourful. <laughs> Okay, so the next one is weird pain. So I mean pain in places where you wouldn't expect to have pain, like your groin, your hips, and your thigh. This is called referred pain. And referred pain is pain that starts at one site, but then is felt at a different site. So the pain starts in your uterus, but you're feeling it in your back, hips, thigh, or groin. This happens because the nerves from the T10 to L1 segment of your spinal cord, yes, we're taking it there because we're medical, um, these nerves supply the cervix and the uterus. So period pains in these organs are also transmitted to the areas of the skin that are supplied by the same spinal nerves. So that's the area between your belly button and your thigh. The next one is increased sex drive. A few studies show that women experience an increased sex drive before their period. Usually it's around the time of ovulation, which actually coincides with when you are 
are most likely to get pregnant. So it's thought that it's because there's a peak in the level of hormone estrogen, also an increase in the level of testosterone, which actually increases your sex drive. So if getting pregnant is not part of your plan, then you need to make sure that your contraception is watertight. So there are some women who report that actually they have an increased sex drive on their period. And there are a few theories about this, including increased blood flow to the genital and pelvic region, which might help to make things more sensitive down there and then increase sexual arousal. Another theory is that during your period, your progesterone level, which suppresses your sex drive is quite low and your estrogen level, which increases your sex drive is starting to rise. So this might be why some women have an increased sex drive on their period. Also, some women feel less worried about having sex during their period because they think that this is the safe time and that they can't get pregnant. So this can help with increasing sexual desire because you're not as worried, but that's actually a false sense of security because you can get pregnant on your period. But the important thing to know is that there isn't a normal sex drive because there's such a huge variation between different people. Although your sex drive is linked to your hormones and therefore your menstrual cycle, it's not the full story. There's, it's actually quite complex. It's a complex interplay between your mood, your stress level, your sleep, your body image, um, your emotional and mental well-being, even religious and cultural factors come into play as well. Thank you for watching. If you found this useful, please do share it.